Hello, my name is Patrick Barnard. I'm a member of a citizens group here in Westmount, Quebec in Canada. Our group is called Save the Park, Sauvons le Parc. And so we've prepared this little film, which is about the man who runs the most important single website in North America if you want to know about synthetic turf. His name is Guy Murfendereski. His website is www.synturf.org. And so Save the Park, Sauvons le Parc is proud to present this little mini film, Guy Murfendereski Speaks about synthetic turf. Hello. How are you? Yes, hi, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. Give the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission has said it's going to begin an investigation of lead in synthetic turf fields, and New, Year New Jersey health officials, after randomly testing New Jersey fields, have closed two because they found lead levels eight to ten times the levels acceptable in soil, for example. Can you tell us your assessment? For the first time, uh, the federal government um, of the United States is taking an active interest in beginning to look at aspects of artificial turf as a product. Uh, for, some long, for some time now, we have known certain aspects of artificial turf fields are not exactly uh, trouble-free. Uh, uh, however, uh, for the first time, uh, due to this investigation that happened in New Jersey, a uh, sufficient amount of data was generated in order to warrant uh, the commission to take jurisdiction and begin investigation of lead in the uh, dust that was vacuumed from some of these fields. I would like to ask you, uh, if you would give us your opinion, what is your view of these synthetic turf fields and the danger that they represent to urban green space and the environment? Oh, it's, it's phenomenal. Uh, the, typically, these fields replace existing natural grass fields that municipalities and institutions are incapable of maintaining. And so they really uh, uh, deliver a double blow uh, to, to, the, uh, to the environment. Not only they deprive the environment of a, of a living a really cool addition, which is natural grass, but it replaced it basically with a lifeless eco-desert. The city of Westmount in Quebec, Canada, and its city council and its mayor, Miss Karen Marks, decided against synthetic turf and decided to keep natural grass fields. That decision was taken in part because of a public consultation in Westmount in May 2007. And Guy Mefendereski has told me that he thinks one of the most important things that happened at that consultation was the public showing of a series of satellite pictures of thermal images. They were taken by the Montreal and Westmount geographer Camilo Perez Arau. He collated a series of satellite thermal images he took Westmount's fields in 2005, the natural grass fields, and he used them as a point of comparison with Montreal's famous synthetic fields. And a very interesting difference emerged. Westmount's natural grass fields were cool and blue as photographed from outer space. Montreal's synthetic fields were red and they were hot. I think the, the, the detriment to all of this is that of all of this is that when you look at an artificial turf field, you're just seeing one field. But if you, look, if you were to look at it as an acre of land, of, of natural grass land, then in the last uh, seven, eight years in this country, in the United States, we have created 3,500 acres of plastic fields. Uh, that is a huge blow to the environment, uh, not, not also uh, taking into account that each one-acre multi-purpose artificial turf field has the carbon footprint uh, that would require 891 conifer trees to make it carbon neutral in its 10-year lifespan. This, this, is, this is not a very good thing. Do you believe that they are possibly damaging to people's health? Yes, I do. And I base that on what I... Re I'm not a physician. 
but I uh, base that on what I read and can deduce. It has always bothered me that when you walk on these fields, you truly, you truly begin to feel the, the rising heat, which is something you don't get when you're walking in, on, on a patch of natural grass in the middle of the summer. And this, to me, suggests that this kind of inhalation of, of humidity and possible existence of toxins in the off-gassing of some of the stuff that rises, uh, could rise, uh, either in the form of dust particulates or, 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 or other, or just basically vapors, cannot be good for you, particularly one which has actually been identified to be a carcinogen. Um, this, to me, suggests that we, there is so much more that we don't know about playing on these surfaces that we really need to uh, uh, essentially uh, look at them from the perspective of players, particularly the young ones who are closer to the ground than the older and, uh, uh, you know, generation that may actually have the benefit of, of having their noses a few feet higher in the air. Um, there, there, is, there, is a, there is a serious uh, kind of a, um, aspect to it that if you can smell this thing, then you're inhaling it. It's going, on, it's going in your nostril. But of course, there are other issues that come with artificial turf, and we need to uh, essentially keep uh, reminding the public officials that just by answering one, you know, they might have gotten a letter, but it's not, there's no reason why they shouldn't start to write the book on this. And we need a book on this. We don't just, you know, this is not just something that should come across the desk of a functionary and then, and then to make a determination and go away for good. I think the pressure needs to be kept up on the part of the public and the activists and the environmental and health people and get the government to take a look at this product in all of its aspects. Because remember, most of what this, this product represents is a recycling industry um, refuse. <laughs> this, this, is, this is something that at one point in its prior life was undesirable. And now we're being asked that our children should play on products that is created from these undesirable elements. And I just don't think that that is a very responsible way to be approaching this. That's why all of us in this have to make sure that this just doesn't stop with two letters from two places you know, in New York or, you know, in, uh, or out of New Jersey, that this is a national problem and that uh, everyone needs to get in, into this conversation. You know, there's initiatives in various jurisdictions, New York State, Connecticut, New Jersey, and the New York City Council. Uh, people have been suggesting legislation. Do you have any idea whether any of that legislation is uh, going to go through, calling for a moratorium and testing? Probably not, mm -hmm. uh, for, because uh, most of these artificial turf um, uh, uh, field uh, manufacturers, well, these are big businesses. These are multinationals. They, they make millions of dollars selling this product, and um, they get paid to go and promote their industry. Right. Most of us who have been on the other side of this battle don't get paid by anybody to do what we do. We do it because it's the right thing to do, and we pay a price for it both in terms of amount of time and personal resources we devote to this kind of activity. But, but the solace in all of this is that at least we get a chance to have educated the decision maker who ultimately is going to make that decision. And one day when that decision turns out to be the wrong one, we can all say, well, we told you so. You knew, you should have known, shame on you, and they may actually be legal liabilities. <laughs> Thank you.